So for this task, we're adding in a little bit more hardware and trying to subtly introduce another new programming technique. So really in the last one, we, we hinted at this infinite loop, um, so that while loop, and then we looked at turning on a digital output, turning it on and off. Here what we've done is, in the schematic, so let's maybe start with the more complicated schematic view rather than the pictorial view, just to get a bit more comfortable with that. We've got two LEDs now. Hopefully you're familiar with how the LED is connected. So the short leg into ground, the long leg, the positive side into our pins. So we're connected in on pin 10 and pin 14 there. And yeah, so that's just coming to our ground supply. Thing to note with these diagrams, you see if it's got like a, a solid dot, that means those are joined together, those two lines are together. If it just crosses over, that means that's not actually connected together. Those two wires are just crossing, they're not actually soldered together or anything. So what we have here is V out, so we have a power supply coming down to a switch. So we have two dip switches here, um, and we're just connecting one of them, so one of, the other one's free. So power is coming down, and then that's going to give an input into pin 20. So again, just a couple of other things to see, um, and to try and maybe follow this diagram as best you can before maybe relying on the pictorial view. Okay. Now before we get into this, well, let's have a look at the setup. So you can see um, the LED side is sort of similar. Got the ground and our two LEDs connected in. We're now utilizing this 3.3 volt rail. It's connected into one of our switches and then coming out of that switch is going in to uh, pin 20. So you can see when the switch is off, the green LED flashes. But as I go to switch on, the red LED um, starts flashing now. Okay, so our microcontroller is watching the state of this input and then deciding which output to trigger based on that input command. Okay, um, so that's what you get uh, with this. Hopefully, not too bad with the wiring. Again, try and understand maybe the setup of the breadboard. Um, so I think if I go back here, yeah. So remember all these are connected in. So I could have I just connected this wire into this line. Remember they're all connected in. I could have connected up here if I wanted to, but I thought it was a bit clearer there. So the same with this um, line here. These are all connected. So I could have equally went from here just to there and I still would have got back to the, the power supply rail, okay? So just keep in mind how you join in those connections. Remember how to uh, sort of understand the the video or the sorry the breadboard. Now the other thing just to note is what you tend to see. This is an input. Inputs give information into the microcontroller. Okay, outputs are something that we turn on or that do work for us. Right. You'll see a common trend with inputs. How you wire them in is you actually you need to give them power, a power supply, and then they bring that power into the microcontroller, because what they want to do is they want to give a signal into an electrical signal into the microcontroller to tell us when the switch is on or off. For outputs, what happens is the microcontroller gives out the signal and then we connect it to ground to create that loop, that electrical loop, sort of closed loop, okay? So you see there with inputs, power, we got to take power and then bring it in to the uh, embed as an input and then with an output, the microcontroller, the embed, gives out the signal and then we close it out through ground. So there are a couple of things to pick up as we're, we're going along. Now, just as we're understanding hardware, the LEDs, I think, are fairly self-explanatory. We just have a switch here, um, a dip switch, but there's also things like push buttons. And that's a spring return push button. See how it springs back up? and that can have an implication on your coding down the line. So maybe just so we pause on that and think about that, of how that might implicate your coding. Uh, we'll discuss it a little bit later, it'll come in. Uh, but something just to note at this stage, this is like a D10 switch, or like a, a, literally just like a switch, a light switch, that once you push it on, it stays in the on position, and then you have to activate it again to get it into the off position. So the pictorial representation here, Hopefully you can see it quite clearly there as well. 
just maybe don't get confused I've put a kink in this wire just so you can see it's just connecting in there you can sort of see the green highlighted and then it's just looping around into pin 20 and you have your, your outputs okay. then the final part of course is to look at the codes and um, this is the code we've got here let's just maybe do a bit of editing on it oh sorry didn't mean to do that um, a little bit of drawing get so we want to see it a little bit further um, so again hopefully we're familiar with the embed we've got to include that in now look we've got two outputs pin 10 pin 14 remember they have to be correct to what you've wired in they're digital outputs and now we've got a digital input remember digital is just on or off switch is either on or off so make sure you put digital input here okay that's all our declarations now we go into our main bit of code and in our main code we have a while loop so it's going to loop around and constantly check something okay and when you want to check something is you use this if statement the one of the most fundamental coding principles there is if something happens do this otherwise do this okay so that's the key principle to keep in mind when we're doing an if statement We'll drill down into it a little bit in class, but essentially what you have is you have a condition that needs to be met. The microcontroller will keep checking this condition. Is the switch input on? If it is, then it does, see the brackets, how the brackets line up? It does whatever is in the brackets if the switch is on. So it does this, LED goes on, green is off, waits half a second, then the red goes off, waves half a second. And then because our switch stays switched on mechanically, we've seen there it stays on. It's not like a spring return. It will then just loop back around. It will check it again. Yeah, it is on. So it just keeps looping through this. And that's why we've seen it constantly flash on and off. Okay. So that's why I was saying if you didn't actually have um, a switch that was held up, like that was held on, it wouldn't constantly loop around here. Okay. Now, if at any stage, because my controller is checking this so quickly, yeah, when we switch it off, what does it do? Well, it does the else part of the statement. Okay. So we're saying if it's on, do this. If else, if it's off, do this. So you don't need to state else switch input equals zero, because because it's a digital input, the microcontroller knows that the opposite to this is off, okay? Because in an if scenario, you only have two possible. If this is true, else if it's false, do this, okay? So it knows. Now you kind of flip this the other way around. You kind of said, if the switch input equals zero, do this, and then it would automatically know then else means it's on. So hopefully that makes sense. But you just see there, we're turning the green on, it's waiting five seconds, and the green goes off. And like we said before, since the switch, if it stays mechanically held off, it'll just keep looping around this part of the code. It will ignore what's up there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's making sense. One other thing, just you know, again, pay attention to what's going on. Remember the semicolons, remember these brackets. These brackets come into play a lot more um, now because there's quite a few of them at this stage. And maybe just to make it clear, you can see this bracket matches with this one and that groups all this together this bracket matches with this one and that groups all this together then everything that's held in an infinite loop is between them two so that groups all this together and then everything that's inside our main bit of code is all grouped that way so just pay attention to some of that and the final thing is, if you maybe noticed it, equals equals. So equals equals is a logical comparison. Okay, so that means you're checking is the switch input equal to one. Here, you're actually putting the red LED equal to one. But when you do equals equals, you're just checking is it equal to one. So equals is an assignment. You're assigning the value of zero or the value of one to this variable, this name that you've created. Up here, 
when you do equals equals, you're just checking is it equal to. Okay, so a subtle difference, something not to get caught out and I get caught out and we solve a plenty. So there are some of the key takeaway points from this lab session to um, understand. If statements are the fundamental building blocks of programming, you really need to understand how to work. Uh, because you can just you can start doing a lot of things with if statements, you know, so quickly and you can start testing things and trying them out. And then you start building in some more sophisticated programming techniques on top of that.